Roll SK here with another bitter unboxing. This time it's a chance to rekindle our childhood dreams and youth with yet another Nintendo console. So we're going to take this thing out and see how it stacks up against all the other Nintendo consoles I already own, which is pretty much all of them. So what we have here is the Super Mario Odyssey edition of the Nintendo Switch. I have never touched a Nintendo Switch or played with one. I was waiting for the one software application that I couldn't turn down. And this was it. And here it is, finally. Two-day super save shipping on Amazon comes in five days. Thanks, Amazon. So right away, we could take a look at the box. The game is uh, supposed to come with it. And right away, we can notice they cheaped out and gave us a download code instead of the actual cartridge which is a piss off, but whatever. The box apparently comes with uh, its own purse, a bunch of little pieces of plastic, and uh, what appears to be a Galaxy Note tab, tablet, computer. Uh, just looking at the box, I can tell you, even just from the one shipping thing here, it's already got some dings and uh, bangs on it. You know, I got a Super Nintendo uh, box downstairs, it's 20 years old, that's in better shape than this. They really, uh, really chintzed up on the case, that's for sure. So, no sense holding off our disappointment. Let's just dig right into her and see what this god-awful thing came with. So there you go. Box folds open. Fairly simple, no plastic tab or anything to cut. And I'm already handed with what appears to be some small children's toys. Good God, that is tiny. I mean, I heard these are small, but like in my man-sized hands, these these things are not right. You know, that I got I got a toe that's bigger than these tiny little things, and yeah, they come in a nice little piece of plastic bag crap. There's no stickers to pull off. Got some markings on the side. I assume that's to sync things up. I don't care. Just, boy, that's, that is, that is real chintzy feeling there. Tiny, tiny stuff. Oh, well. I mean, it's not like you have to play with these. You can use other controllers as I understand it. And uh, here uh, we appear to have, as I said, a uh, Galaxy uh, tablet of some kind. Uh, geez, not much to say about this. It's small. Oh, that is, that's where your game card goes in. See, that, that is garbage right there. You see that plastic little flappy tab on there? That's just begging to get caught and ripped off and lost, which I'm sure uh, will then result in this thing being shoved full of uh, dust. Uh, overall, the case feels kind of nice. It's sort of a metal-y feel, but I'm sure it's not metal. And then we've got, of course, the famous kickstand. There you go. There's also a uh, micro SD slot that I have no idea what it'd be good for, since this thing does not let you uh, load games that aren't sold by Nintendo. I, maybe it lets you store them on there. I guess we'll see. I'll throw in 128 there and see how she chooses. So there you go. That's apparently the Switch itself. Anything else in this little box? Nope, just box. More garbage crap. Nice feature about the limited edition Mario Switch thing is it comes with your own little coin purse there. You know, this will go good with any woman's handbag, uh, black or red. You know, you can easily store your lipstick and makeup in there. I think that's great. Nice little foam case. You know, uh, this is supposed to be a Mario Odyssey version. Oh, oh I was going to say, there's no Mario Odyssey branding, but uh, there, there, in fact, we have half of Donald Duck's head, which I think is the brand for the Switch. Let's keep digging into her. More cardboard crap. Yeah, we got some fancy foam plastic in here. Let's see here. Uh, okay. I think this little dingus is for that little dingus there. 
And from what I read on the internet, yeah, you match up the, this one's got a plus sign and that one's got a plus sign and it's supposed to go on like that apparently. You well, know, that's simple enough. So I guess that's how you hold them in your hand. So then there's the other side of one. You know, I'm disappointed. In the modern day of manu industrial manufacturing, engineering design, you would be able to come up with, with these things that work on either side. And they didn't do that. I remember seeing some review earlier, reviewers earlier saying that it was very easy to bugger these things up and get them locked on there forever. More chintzy plastic crap to lose. What do we have here? Oh, okay. This, uh, I think, is their excuse for a controller. If I think correctly, this goes into, oh yeah, there we go. So it comes with this device, which I don't know if it adds battery capacity or anything. I doubt it. I think it's just a fancy holder. So that's, that's good, another small piece to break and just feeling that it's, doesn't feel great. It, again, it's really small in the hands. We have a high speed HDMI cable. Looks to be a fairly standard generic HDMI cable. Made in China for Germany. D45, doesn't state HDMI 1 or 2 or 2.4 or any of that sort of crap. I, I'd be hesitant to trust that to uh, any sort of broadband signal, that's for sure. We have ourselves a generic brick power supply. Now, this is a departure from the previous systems. Both the Wii and the Wii U had the power brick separate from the plug-in. So you actually had room to plug the damn thing in. If you have more than one console you know, or just one plug handy, you're buggered with something like this because you know we all know how much space these stupid things take up. And it looks to be a USB Type C connector on the bottom, and from what I understand, that charges up through there. Great. We have. There's our game, folks. There's a game. A little scratch and win key code on the bottom. Lip de doo. Much would have preferred a small cartridge. And as you can see in the box, there's lots of freaking room. Why not just give us the cartridge? Because those cost money. And this kit or package costs $10 less than just buying a damn Switch and the game separately. But you don't get the game box, you don't get the game cartridge, you don't get an instruction manual. So it's a ripoff. And here we have the final resting place for our Nintendo Switch. That's right, folks. Because... Uh, Unlike uh, what Nintendo wants me to do, this thing's never leaving the dock. It's going to sit there forever with my other Nintendo consoles, and I will play it in my house like a civilized human being. I'm not taking this thing on the bus. I might take it on a plane. I'm not going to lie to you about that, but this thing's going to stay at home. So, there you have it. Here's your Mario Odyssey Switch unboxing. Shitty cheap box. Chintzy plastic parts. Tiny childlike controllers, which I'm sure, you know, are functional, but my God, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly like 30 years too old to use this crap, but it does come with a nice coin purse for your makeup and mirrors and the rest of it. So now we're going to get this thing lined up next to the other generations of Nintendo consoles and see how the thing stacks up. Here we have the original Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1983. It was a groundbreaking system at the time when games, though they were 8-bit, were pretty shabby. It featured uh, four-track sound, which was a big deal, and uh, a large color palette, and an ease of use. And why is this better than Nintendo Switch? Almost every single part of this is more durable in general than the Nintendo Switch. So, I mean, starting from the AF uh, receiver, you know, you have about a 10 feet cable on that thing, meaning you've got a lot of room to move the console around. Came with the unit, plugs right in. Also a deadly weapon. Now, most of the old Nintendo systems are so robust, they are good as personal defense weapons. And that's going to be my primary argument about why these things are more durable. I've gotten stabbed by this so many times. Um, but this thing flung around on the end of its cable, that's going to take your eye clean out. Moving forward to the power brick, I mean, 
I mean, look at that. You swing that thing around, that's, that's going to take out some teeth right there. You know, that's, that's a big, chunky power supply. The console itself is a sharp edged brick. This thing, uh, if you take this to the face, you're going down, okay? So robust and heavy, still works to this day, some 30 years plus on. You know, and the original Nintendo Entertainment System was so badass, it came with a freaking gun, okay? You know, you spray paint this thing black, they're not breaking into your house. You know, now this would be a very controversial add-on, and I think it was at the time, that's why it's bright orange, because, uh, you know, of course, the zapper didn't want to be confused for a weapon, which actually did happen a few times. People have been robbed with these, believe it or not. But this thing, good club. Again, you got the cable. If you want to swing it around and hit some of the face, it's, it's strong. This is still strong, durable plastic. Still works to this day. The controller that came with it, again, you've got a sharp, hard plastic weight on the end of a long, long cable. Swung at high speeds, you can take out teeth or at least do some mild bruising. Not to mention it's durable. I mean, this thing, to this day, still works. Compare that to any of this. Cheap, plastic, light crap. These, these aren't going to hurt anybody, okay? You, you can huck this at full speed or use a, you know, a slingshot if you want. Minor damage compared to any one of these components. This, yeah, it's a little bit heavy. We get hit once, that thing's going to break in half, even with its chintzy plastic case. Now, should be mentioned, the switch does come with a power brick, but it does not compare in size and weight. And I believe the cord on this one's longer, and I would bet stronger. And let's not even get into these. So there you have it, the Nintendo Entertainment System, superior, superior personal defense weapon compared to the Nintendo Switch. Let's take a look at the one that came after this. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1990 by Nintendo. And, uh, boy, I played the heck out of this. My jam was Super Mario World and F-Zero. Also enjoyed all the shooting games that came with it. Wonderful 16-bit system. Comp competed very well with the Nintendo Genesis. Uh, what can we say about this? You know, again, starting, starting from the left here, we've got the heavy, heavy power brick. No change in argument there. That thing is a weapon on a string. Very heavy, very robust, sharp. Gonna knock out some teeth. The, uh, not much you can say about the AV cables. I mean, the, it compares to anything on a cable. You know, you can use that to tie somebody up if you need to. Still handy to have around. Uh, the, to be fair, the switch comes with an HDMI cable. So, I mean, you can argue that that's, that's an equal on that one. The actual console itself, Again, robust, very hard plastic, strong as hell, got some sharp corners. You brick somebody with that, they're going down. You know, and, and again, very robust. This thing still works to this day, you know. Some uh, 37 years after it came out, sorry, 27 years after it came out, still functional. And hey, look, there's a Nintendo hotline if you want to pay money for hints back before the internet days. You know, let's take a look at the cartridge for these as well. I mean, these things are pretty robust. Look at that original receipt in box, but used. Here we have Super Metroid. As you can see, the cartridge itself, it's, it's actually quite strong as well. And uh, you know, you're not gonna really hurt anybody with this, but I mean, you could prop up a table with it if you like, or a couch. These things are very strong. And again, still work to this day. And finally, the controller. These things were marvelous. Remember the uh, excitement of having all the buttons going from from two to, to six was quite the leap. All of a sudden, things like Street Fighter were doable. Anyway, same deal as the Nintendo controller. This is, this is a flail. I mean, you swing this puppy around, you're gonna hurt somebody. You might not do it more than three, four times before you break something, but you know, it's still quite robust, still works to this day, still has a great button feel. And you know, compared to, again, the Switch, this is a much better personal defense setup. You know, uh, seeing the controllers are chintzy on this thing compared to that, they just don't feel as good. And the thing is, again, not very robust. So there you have it, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So let's move on to the N64 and see what that thing has to offer us. Ah, the N64. Who can uh, forget the first time they picked up Mario, Super Mario 64 and had no freaking idea how to hold that mess. Uh, this came out roughly in mid-90s, I think 96. 
uh, you know, Nintendo sort of sticks to a six year cycle more or less. And uh, it was a 64 bit system. It was came out in a time when a lot of systems were switching to things like CD systems. You know, like the PlayStation had come out, I think at this time, I think maybe even the Xbox, but eh, maybe not the Xbox. But again, things were switching to a CD based system. I think the Dreamcast was out around this time as well. But Nintendo stuck to the cartridge based system. And uh, they built an outstanding product to this day that still plays well. If you've ever played any of these N64 games, you'll know they're just super fun. GoldenEye, everybody knows GoldenEye. But look, let's get right down to it. Same deal as the last two. You got a big, well, actually this is about the lightest of those power bricks in, in total. But it is still a power brick on a long cord that's pretty strong. You can swing that around, keep those zombies at bay. Plus want to get fancy, plug it in there. It's actually pretty rigid. You can swing the whole damn thing around and this itself is also a brick. You know, this is well made, solid, solid plastic, very durable, not very heavy, but heavy enough that you can use that to brick somebody in the head. Let's take a look at the cartridges. Ah, Super Mario 64. So these are a little bit smaller than the SNES cartridge, but again, they're quite robust, very solid plastic. You guys know how this stuff feels if you ever held one. It's rigid as all hell. Great doorstop. Also plays decent games. Get back in there, careful. Nice. And let's, this is obviously the weapon of this system. This monster of a controller. I mean, look at this thing. This is a grappling hook. It'll get you over a wall, get you up a tree. You swing somebody that around, you're taking them white like right out. God help you if you have the extra, you've got the uh, extra vibration pack in there with batteries. That's some extra weight on the end of this thing. That's going to really mess somebody up if you hit them. Or you know what? You can just stun them and tell them to hold it and try and figure out how to play the damn thing. And they're going to stand there for an hour just trying to figure out the best hand position. At that time, you can run or tie them up. But out of all the systems, this is the most lethal controller by far compared to that. Okay, garbage, crap. You know, let's, let's give the Switch a fair shot here. Let's uh, use its fancy, fancy holder thing. You know, it's a little closer, but you know, you've got nothing here that you can swing it with. I mean, you just have to hit somebody with that. So even with its little add-on, this is dominating out of all the, all the Nintendo system consoles that have been released. So there you have it, the N64, still superior to the lightweight Nintendo Switch. Let's move on to the first of the disc generation of Nintendo consoles, the GameCube. The Nintendo GameCube. This came out in 2000 and this is the one that competed with the first Xbox and the PlayStation 2 and the Dreamcast. It was Nintendo's first disc based system in North America. Uh, great games came with this, you know, Smash Brothers Brawl I think was a big hit with this and many others including the Metroid Prime series. Um, I didn't actually own one of these until recently so I don't have too much gameplay experience with it but it is a great console, I do enjoy playing it. Let's get right down to the meat and potatoes of her. Once again, we have a big power brick. Look at this, double cords, okay? You can swing that around on double cords, hit people with it. P great, great personal defense weapon right there. And that's not to mention the king of the heap. My personal favorite for the most deadly Nintendo console released in terms of the actual console itself. Look at that, folks. It's got a bloody handle. You can swing that thing around and really do some damage. Not to mention it's got lasers in it. Take a quick look at the games. Not much to say about these. They are tiny little CDs. That's not going to hurt anybody. Better off just throwing the whole case and running. Controller, again, a decently robust controller with a long cable. Well made, still works well to this day. This one had much better hand position than the N64 controller and actually influenced a lot of controllers for Nintendo moving forward. I mean, let's take a look here, folks. Other than this button layout, I mean, these things are pretty simple. Pretty, pretty similar in terms of the actual layout itself and pretty similar in size to the uh, Nintendo Switch controller, except of course, when you separate these things, they're much smaller. 
comparing console size, as you can see, we're sort of getting closer to size, but this does not have a handle. You're not swinging that one around. Power brick size comparison, obviously this one's bigger, heavier, does more damage. So the GameCube, great at games, great at keeping the zombies and monsters at bay, just with that handle there, folks. So now we're going to get into the lighter weight consoles. That's right, it's time for the Wii generation. Ah, the Wii. Released, I think, 2006 uh, to a very confused gaming community who's wondering what the hell they were going to do with this rubber phallic shaped thing. You know, and what had they done to our beloved tough, tough consoles? It, 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 the, the specs when it came out were much lower than the other consoles that were already out. PS3, Xbox 2, this thing was a lightweight. It couldn't even do 1080p. Geez, I don't even know if it does a 720. But, you know, does have its merits. So let's take a quick look at them. Number one, the Wii came with a big power bar. Same deal as the GameCube, that thing's weapon with double, double cables. So, as mentioned before, you can swing that thing around. Good melee weapon. The actual unit itself, you know what? This is heavier than either the GameCube or the N64. They packed a lot of technology into this at the time to make it small, lightweight, and friendly for the uh, living room. It's got a lot of sharp edges. I'm sure that this thing swung around can do a lot of damage. Believe it or not, it's pretty heavy and it's pretty robust. Though, I mean, as it gets older, the laser and the disc stuff all sort of wears out. That's just going to happen. Now, the controller itself, it's really not much redeemable about this. You might be able to choke somebody with this, but I think it would break. The nunchuck is so lightweight, that's never going to do anything. I have a suspicion that, you know, well, okay, let's, let's face it, folks. These things can do some damage. There were lawsuits over this when it came out because people had a tendency to throw them through their televisions. So, yeah, okay, it can do some small amount of damage if it doesn't have the rubber sheathing and if you really, really huck it and the batteries are in it. But that's not where this thing dominates. Folks, you know where I'm going with this. The most destructive part of the Wii system is, in fact, the Wii balance board. This thing's a monster. My God, it's, it's, it's built to take like 300 pounds of, of weight. And no, it's not just deadly to overweight gamers that decide to finally get off the couch and suffer cardiac arrest. This thing's deadly because it's heavy, it's well-made, it's got metal in it. If you whack somebody with that thing, they're going down. Hell, you can even use that to reinforce your door or windows when the zombies come. So compared to the Switch, as you can see, it's got a bigger power bar. The system itself is bigger. The controller, yeah, I would say the controller would do a little more damage than these little suckers, that's for sure. But the balance board, that's your best bet for home defense. Therefore, the Wii is better than the Switch. So let's see what happens when we go to the Wii U. Our thing is going to fall apart. Let's take a look. And that takes us finally to the Wii U. And if uh, you thought the Wii confused you when the Wii U came out, you had no idea what to think. So, let's see, it came out roughly, I think 2013. No, that's not right. Maybe 2012? Eh, doesn't matter. The thing that weirded people out was this weird touchscreen thing that, okay, so it was kind of neat that you could play games on your TV or that or both. This had motion controls built in, which was kind of familiar, but it was awkward to hold in your hands. And trying to watch what was happening on the screen and off the screen at the same time was often confusing and hard to deal with. If you've ever tried the new Star Fox, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The game is a piece of garbage. It's impossible to play because you fly on your TV and you aim with this. You're constantly trying to fly around in 3D while aiming 3D with that. It's absolutely unplayable. It's garbage. They ruined it. But... There are a lot of great games that came out on the Wii U. Um, to name a few, the, I'm trying to think, Mario Galaxy, no, that was the Wii, that was pretty good. Uh, Mario Maker, super popular, the new Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario 3D was good. Breath of the Wild, I mean, I, I put hundreds of hours into Breath of the Wild, that definitely game of the year, I mean, it won game of the year, it's a great game. You know, uh, Spl Splatoon and, and, and many others came out on this that do make it worth owning. It's a decent system. But can you keep your loved ones safe from harm with it? Well, let's take a look. 
biggest power bar, I think, out of all of them. Double cabled. This has got the best power brick for bricking somebody with using the cables, by far. So it has a win there. The system itself, yeah, it feels pretty heavy. But it also, well, I guess it feels not too bad. It's like fairly rigid. Get those things off of there, who cares? You know, I guess, you know, it's similar to the Wii, except less sharp corners. You know, so I gotta say the Wii is probably do more damage with the sharper corners and the better build quality than, than the actual console itself, but the Wii doesn't have this thing. You know, and this is, this is cute because, I mean, Nintendo didn't even really try. As I snort there, pardon me, I got a bit of a cold. Look, it's the same damn thing. I mean, I guess go with what works, same screen size and stuff like that. Uh, this one's a little heavier, it's got a bigger battery in it. This one's a little thicker. I gotta say, out of these two, uh, this, oh geez, I don't know. I would literally have to beat somebody to death to figure out which one of these was more deadly. But when combined with the rest of the system, overall the Wii U is the winner. You know, the, the peripherals that come with the Switch are not as large and robust, and you got this second power brick for the charger for the handheld piece of junk, and yeah, I think, the, God, I gotta say the Wii U wins this one as well. So there you have it. The Nintendo Switch is a piece of garbage. If you wanna defend your home and loved ones, buy every other Nintendo console ever released. If you uh, wanna play the best video games that you could currently get on Nintendo, well then get a Switch. I uh, got the Odyssey edition, I played through all of Odyssey, and I gotta say, I loved the game. Best Mario I've played to date. And uh, from what I understand, Nintendo has decided to release games at a slower rate to make sure they're higher quality. Uh, the Switch, after I got used to the tiny controls, they felt very natural in my hand and kind of lazy because you can just sort of sloth off while holding them there. The motion controls were accurate. The feedback you get in the vibration was, dis was decent. The graphics are great on your television and it's 100% portable, it's got that going for it. The battery life is decent. The resolution's higher than all the previous Nintendo consoles. It is, however, a glorified mobile processor. This is powered by an NVIDIA Tegra X1 or some variant of that. So you really are just getting a gaming tablet that plugs into your TV, but who cares? Great on games, fun to own, portable, but garbage for killing zombies. There you go, bitter unboxing. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you like, uh, make sure you like and subscribe and share. And uh, we'll do more of these as more crap comes out we can complain about. I'm OSK. Thanks for watching.